Jackie told a little bit about uh, the backstory. So Jackie and I actually connected, how she was about a year or so ago. I think she reached out to me at the time and said, there's this great marketing conference. Would you like to come? And at the time, I was in the beginning stages of getting my business set up. And I said, I don't have the budget, but let's keep talking. And this year, she came up and said, hey, how about you come back and speak? And I said, gosh, it'd be awesome to come out. And she's been following me. So LinkedIn is part of the reason I'm here today. So I feel like I always owe a lot to the network. And what I'm going to be covering here is very much a hands-on session. So if you have your laptop with you, bring it out. If you have your phone, the LinkedIn app, go ahead and bring that out. We're going to be um, kind of looking at those things throughout. If you have both, that's great, because there will be a few points where we look at a comparison of your desktop versus your app. And very much this is going to be a hands-on session for today. So um, I have a little fun giveaway. It was an element I started bringing into my presentations. And whenever I present, I tell a little bit about myself, and I always say that I love my family, I love my job, and I also love coffee, chocolate, and pie. Yes. So what I started to do, and pie is like this kind of unique thing, you know that there are the cupcake people, you know who they are, right? Everybody knows a cupcake person. Bacon people, any bacon people in the room? There's always like one or two bacon people, you know who you are, right? I'm the pie lady. So what I started doing is, um, I'm gonna pass this around, if you want to be eligible, I've got two. These are actually tartlets. They're little mini pies. They're like four inches round, so they're not too big. But I've got a chocolate one and a fruit one. I'm going to pull for one winner, and the other one's going to go to a different person. But um, you get a chance to win a pie. So if you'd like that, I'm going to throw this around right now. It's a pie thing. It's going to fun. And I'll have Jackie come up at home and tell the winner. At the end, we do that. Okay? So we're going to rotate that around. So um, when I was getting ready to come out to this event, I was uh, practicing and, and getting things ready. And um, my daughter and I, we created this word. She actually started, when she, was, when she gets very nervous but excited about something new, she calls it nerve sighted. And this is Charlotte. Last weekend, I took Charlotte to get her ears pierced. She actually wanted to go do it. And she was very nerve sighted about getting her ears pierced. But she did it, and she was so proud. And I actually posted something on LinkedIn about you know coming out to this conference, and I said, I'm more excited. I love presenting. I love sharing what I know about LinkedIn, but I do get nervous a little bit when I present. So it helps me to kind of work off the nerves when I'm presenting. So I asked Charlotte, I said, you know, I'm going to Texas and my brain color is pink. And I said, do you think mommy could get away with bringing her pink cowboy hat to present? And she said, sure. She's seven, you know, she's got good taste. And I said, what about, what about mommy's pink color boa? Do you think I could pull that off, being up on the stage there? And she's like, that's great, you should do that. And she said, you gotta bring your glasses too. So I got these glasses from, where's this place called? Five Below or Ten Below or Five Below? Is it Five Below? And so she calls these my Snapchat filter glasses. Is that awesome? So I, um, I bring these today, and I want to confess to you guys something. I'm an introvert at heart. And I know some people are like, well, how are you talking in front of a room when you're an introvert? Well, that's a character description, it's not a character flaw. So anytime I get the chance to present, I present. And it helps to keep the nerves off. And I use crafts and audience interaction to help with that. And these are some of the techniques I use on LinkedIn as well for audience engagement. So we already went around the room at the beginning today and we talked about our names and our businesses. But I'd like to get maybe two volunteers from the group. If you could just tell me, again, Miranda's your name, and one thing you're hoping to learn about LinkedIn today, and then your favorite kind of hack. Okay? Can I get a volunteer? I'll wait. Yes, in the back. Okay, good. So, uh, I'm John Gore, a director of marketing at Mason Holdings. Okay. We have a lot of brands, we're a manufacturer. Um, so, what am I hoping to learn today? Something, something new. I mean, I think there's so many issues going on, you know, that we're all kind of dealing with at this point in time, but um, uh, I, I think, you know, whenever there are, there is a cloud, you know, there's some sun that are kind of looking for as well. Sure. And hopefully we can move from where we're at. Okay. Favorite kind of pie is banana cream pie. Banana cream, awesome, love it. So you said John, right? Yeah. So here's the same, John. I'm going to pass the feather bow around. You're all rock stars, and you're going to be rocking with my presentation here today. So John, you get to wear the feather bow over now. And then, um, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, we're going to be passing the feather bow around today's presentation, so you, you can have some fun. All right? And feel free to take pictures of yourself or your neighbors wearing the bow over here. All right. John will look great, man. 
Uh, can I get one more volunteer? And one more in the back. Um, hi guys, I'm Patrick uh, Cronin with NTN. Um, one thing that I'm hoping to learn about LinkedIn is kind of, I'm not as confident with the, the topics and even like the tone to use when posting on LinkedIn. It's kind of a different market than the other okay. social channels. Yeah. Um, so I'm hoping to get a little better feel for that. And um, I, I gotta go with Key Lime Pie. Key Lime, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. That's a nice special. Did you say I'm sorry, Catherine? Yes. John, could you pass it to Catherine? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so the feather bow is gonna be floating around. Um, throughout the presentation. And I asked the banana or the I asked the pie question for myself because I love pie. Now my mouth is watering when you guys are talking about different kinds of pies. And sometimes you tell me different kinds of pies when I do that. So um, let's get started with LinkedIn. What is LinkedIn? Well I want to address first and foremost LinkedIn is not a job search site. Yes, you can certainly search for a job on LinkedIn, but quite often when I do these presentations, I hear from people, well, I don't want to be on LinkedIn because I'm not looking for a job, and I don't want my boss to think I'm looking for a job. Well, LinkedIn is actually used more by people for professional networking and business development than it is used by job seekers. So get over that, move on as a professional networking site. It's growing every year. It's a huge, huge growth potential right now. I think some people are moving off of Facebook and they're getting kind of burnt out of that, and they're realizing, gosh, LinkedIn is this warm and friendly place, and it's all professional. There's a huge opportunity in LinkedIn right now, so get active on LinkedIn. They're growing up to, I think, 610 million members right now, over 200 countries, and um, every Fortune 500 company is participating in using LinkedIn. When you connect with people on LinkedIn, they're called connections, so don't call them friends. These are connections that you're making on LinkedIn. And it's professional, so I avoid anything that is not professional. LinkedIn has a field for birthday. I don't put it on there. I actually turn off birthday notifications as well. Okay, and simply avoiding anything controversial, anything I wouldn't want, I, I would state my business on. So if I'm posting something controversial about politics and a customer doesn't have that same point of view, I could lose a customer. So we avoid those types of things on LinkedIn. All right, and then some facts on LinkedIn, and I want you to keep these things in mind as we're going throughout the presentation and we're talking about status updates and what to post and how often should I be on LinkedIn. Um, even though there are 610 million members on LinkedIn, less than half, about 250 million, logging, are logging in monthly or more. So they're not going out there all the time. And 40% <coughs> of the people fall into that heavy user group where they log in daily. And I want to see a show of hands. How many people are on LinkedIn? Have a LinkedIn account? Okay? Put your hands down. But how many of you are using LinkedIn? You don't need to raise your hands. How many of you are using LinkedIn, right? So think about that. Are you actually going on the site and getting something out of it and contributing to the network? The average user, and this is when they factor in all the people that are using LinkedIn, the average user spends 17 minutes a month on LinkedIn. That's not a lot of time. You know, that's, that's not like we hang out on Facebook. We go into LinkedIn, we get what we need, and we leave, right? And if uh, later on I'm going to talk about photos, if you do put a photo on your account, you're going to get 14 to 21 times more profile views. So do keep that in mind. All right, and if you have your phone or your laptop, you're going to start looking at your profile right now. What I find is this is going to be really useful if you're looking at your profile and actually incorporating some of the data and results right away. So. If you're looking at the section of your profile, scroll down right underneath your summary at the top, and you're going to see a section, and it says your dashboard private to you. Okay. So when you're looking at your numbers, don't freak out when your numbers are not as high as mine. This is what I do for a living. So my numbers should be higher, otherwise Jackie shouldn't have been calling me here today, right? But I do want you to kind of look at these three numbers going across. The very first number represents how many times your profile has been viewed in the past 90 days. Okay. We'll come back to that in just a second. That's a very important number. The next number is the last time you posted on LinkedIn, how many times was it viewed into the homepage feed? If you see zero, that means you either haven't posted in a really long time or you're not posting at all yet, okay? The third number is how many times you've appeared in search appearances in the past week. We're gonna work on optimizing our profile today. As you optimize, you're gonna come up in more search appearances. So what I want you to do right now is click on that very first number, okay? Click on that number, and as long as you're not private, like completely can't share connections, that type of thing, 
As long as you have a regular settings, you should be able to see this trend line. Are you guys seeing this? Are you seeing the trend line? Okay, so what I want you to do is kind of pay attention. This is showing the past 90 days. And what I want you to do here is almost imagine a trend line that would be going across. And where were you, you know, back at the beginning of the 90 days, and where are you today? And I want you to focus on over time. You should really try to keep that trend line at least flat, if not increasing. But really important here is let's focus on the peaks. What did you do then? What did you do then? What were the activities that were driving people to look at your profile? Okay, That's what I do, and I think that's really effective. Don't worry about the dips. We all have them. Um, but do focus on when you're seeing the peaks. Okay. Next thing I want you to do is um, look at your profile. If you have both your laptop and your phone, you can actually do the side-by-side -side comparison right now. When you're looking at your profile, you're going to notice there's a few things that are different on the desktop view versus the mobile view. And as we build our profiles, we're, we're putting these things out there, it's going to be important to keep these things in mind. The first thing is that your headshot photo on the desktop is left aligned. In mobile, it's in the center. So as you think about a branded header that goes behind us, make sure that you're keeping in mobile versus desktop. The other thing is your contact info information. Now, if you want to do business with people on LinkedIn, you've got to make it easy for them to get a hold of you, right? And remember the stat earlier, 17 minutes a month on average per user. So if they want to do business with you and they can't find your contact information, that may prevent them from reaching out to you. They may think, well, she doesn't go on LinkedIn that often, so let me try to find her email address. Don't make me dig, because I'll say I'll do it later and later never comes, okay? And then the third thing is the summary statement length. It's three lines on the desktop, three lines on the mobile, but you're going to notice that it cuts off a lot quicker on mobile. So your summary statement is one of those things that's either going to keep them on your profile or it's going to get them to click back. Okay, So we're going to talk about that summary in a little bit here. So we're going to first start with a review of your profile and, and kind of going through my profile optimization checklist. And I want you to look at your profile as we're going, going throughout here. So as we think about our profile, I want you to think of this concept of a sculptor. Okay? And a sculpture in itself is really kind of that finished piece. But what I want you to do on your LinkedIn is think about the fact that your profile is as much about what you leave out as what you keep in, okay? And what I do when I think about my profile is I think about writing it for my ideal target audience. I'm not writing it for everybody in the world, right? I'm writing it for my ideal target audience. So think about keeping that in mind. Use every area and every character limit they give you. That's gonna help you to come up in searches. That's gonna help you to be found on LinkedIn. Okay? And write it for a person, human beings, right? And write it for a computer. That whole concept of SEO, search engine optimization, is at play here on LinkedIn. Okay? So we're going to start with your profile photo. And there's two areas for images at the top of your profile. And what I look for in terms of your headshot photo is a couple different items here. I look for, is it pleasant? Is it professional? Are you smiling? And you know, there's some other things like, is it current, right? Have you ever seen those people that you know it's 20 years ago when you took that photo? It's a little embarrassing for me and for them. Um, so if it's not current within the past five years, if I see you at an event, I've never met Jackie, but I saw her, I'm like, I know Jackie right away, okay? Really important though is this professional element. So invest if you can in a professional photographer. If your company has access to one, definitely do that. And then the last thing on here, is the size of your photo. What I look for is the size of the photo from the very top of your head to your chin. That should take up about 50 to 60% of the circle. Okay? So keep this in mind too that about half of web traffic nowadays occurs on your mobile device. So if you're from the top of your head to the waist, it's really hard for us to see your face on our mobile. Okay? Another thing, and this is from a, a marketing perspective, and if you're marketers, you should appreciate this. When you're more zoomed in, you look more approachable, you look more personable, you look more important. Okay? The further back your photo is, you seem less approachable, you seem more diminutive, right? You seem less important. So you can actually do this on your phone right now. If you click on that little pencil icon, you can actually zoom in on your headshot photo. And again, I look for like 50 to 60 percent is just my face. Okay? Very subtle thing, but it's going to make a big impact. You guys ever look at? Um, like a board of directors and their photos are on the wall side by side. And then you notice one person's kind of a little bit further back from their head to their waist. And I immediately think, are they not 
is high in priority? Are they on the committee instead of with the full board? So it's a little subtle thing to make a big impact. Okay? I see you guys are working, so you're probably working on those photos right now. All right, the next thing I want to look at is this area behind your headshot. And my guess is there's probably about maybe a half or maybe a quarter of you in the room that have the default teal blue with the dots and the lines. We are marketers here. You guys should all be brand ambassadors for your companies. And ideally, that should be something that is aligning with your brand. And I'm going to give shout outs to three people here. Um, Stephanie, where's Stephanie at? Is she out again? Yeah. Oh, Stephanie's in the back. So Stephanie's got a great branded header. She, the logo's at the top, so it's not hidden on mobile. Looks great. Stacy, same thing. We've got a branded header. The text that she had is still going to be viewable and mobile. So kudos to you there. And then Ernie, he's one of your presenters for tomorrow. He works in an ad agency, so he's got a whole collection of brands and logos and things behind him. Okay. So if you don't have a branded header and you're not a graphic designer, go back to the person that does your design and say, Brenda says I need a branded header. And get that on your account. Okay? I mean, what I even do, if you look at mine, I use this as advertising space. Every couple months I swap out my message, I put something different in there. So think about for you, if there's seasonal things you want to talk about, you can swap those things out. Okay? All right, so moving along, I now want to look at this field underneath your name, and this is called headline. This is your headline field. Now, by default, LinkedIn will put job title at company. So look at your profile right now. If it says job title at company, you have some homework to do. What I like to look for in that field are a couple of descriptive keywords and phrases. You don't need to say job title at company. If you do that, you're blending in with every other person that has that same job title. And think about this. When you're coming up in search results, if you want them to click on your profile to go to your profile, you have to be different than everything else that's in the search results. If every person in here said, VP Marketing at ABC Company, VP Marketing at XYZ Company, VP Marketing at LMNOP Company, how do I know what to di differentiate from one person to another? So all I have to go on is your headshot photo, your name, and your headline. So use your headline as something that's a little bit more descriptive, some keywords. I use the I help blank with blank formula. So I say I help people and businesses unlock the power of LinkedIn. So think about your role, what you do with your organization. How could you flip that headline around a little bit and make it a little bit more descriptive and appealing? Okay? Your goal is to get them to click on your profile when you come up in search results. Okay? So moving on, um, two other things I look for on profiles is you know, how many connections do you have? I think my laser just went out. So how many connections do you have? There's not a magical number, but if I land on a profile and you've only got like 10 connections, I might think, well, the person's not active on LinkedIn, so I'm not going to send them an invitation there. So you should always be growing, and today we're actually going to practice sending a personalized invitation in a little bit. But that's something, every time you go to a conference and you're getting business cards, you should be expanding your network. The next thing is your summary statement in here. And as I said earlier, you have three lines that are viewable, but LinkedIn will actually give you up to 2,000 characters total to tell us your story. And I would say, use all 2,000 characters. Tell us your story. I mean, you guys are all marketers. You can tell your story, right? You're doing that for your organizations all the time, OK? Um, what I look for here is this is not the same as your resume. The goal of a resume is to get a job. The goal of your LinkedIn profile is to connect with people online, to demonstrate your personal brand, to be a good brand ambassador for your company. So your summary should do all of those things. It should tell us your story in a broader way. And um, write it for the ideal target audience. I'm not writing it for everybody in the world that's out there. I'm writing it for people who want to do business with me. Because the reality is, most people are not going to click on show more. Most people are going to click on three, three lines, and they'll just scroll down or click away, right? The people that I, that I can attract in those first three lines that want to do business with me, they'll take time to read the whole thing. Because they want to figure out, is this the kind of person I want to do business with, right? And then underneath that, you can add media. And LinkedIn is a very, your profile is a very text-heavy um, profile. So anywhere you can add photos or emojis or different things to kind of tell us your story, that will definitely help. You're probably going to have some homework to work on on your summary statement. And if you struggle with, gosh, I don't know what to put in my summary, these are some thought starters. I'm not going to read through all of these now. But feel free, if you want to take your, you know, if you want to take your camera phones out, take pictures of the screen. I should have mentioned this earlier. Take pictures of the slides as I'm presenting. Feel free. I am going to make a copy of these slides available to you. All I would ask is that you message me on LinkedIn, because I want you to force you to use the platform. 
to get the get the top of the slides. Um, but again, you know, think about how you describe yourself when you introduce yourself at networking events. Think about your ideal target audience. What's your story? How did you get into the automotive industry? I mean, Jeff did a great job of explaining that the power of storytelling. You know, I started off my career in X Y Z, and now I'm here. And kind of tell people why you do what you do, why you love what you do. Okay. And feel free, look at my profile as often as you'd like. Um, Jackie used the term stalking. I like to use the term research. So do your <laughs> research. Doesn't it sound so much better? Yes. And really, I mean, we're writing our profiles on LinkedIn because we want people to read them, right? So feel free. This is what I do for a living. I have a screen capture in here in the deck, too, of my summary statement. Of the 2,000 characters, I think I used 1987 of them. And you can see I do short paragraphs. In marketing speak, we call this what? short, snackable chunks of copy to make it kind of skimmable. I use uh, section breaks with all caps because I can't do bolding, right? I use emojis for my bullets because it makes it a little bit more interesting. And then in here as well, I have a list of keywords in my specialties here. And this is something I actually just type out and I put in a running paragraph separated by commas. Now, I don't write this for you as a human being. I don't expect you're going to read through that. If you do, fine. But I write this for SEO. Because if I want to be found for LinkedIn strategy, marketing coaching, marketing consulting, I have to use those keywords several times throughout my profile. Now, I don't have the algorithm playbook that says, here's how we compute it. But I do know that if you use keywords in your headline, in your summary, in each of your experience sections, and in your skills list, you have a higher likelihood of coming up in search results. Okay? So this is some homework for you. Again, look at my profile as often as you'd like as you're working on your summary. Maybe it'll inspire you to get some similar ideas. Okay? The next thing I want you to do is if you're looking at your profile, scroll down to your experience section. Okay? And the very first thing is I want you to look at do you have anything in there other than just your employer and job title? Have you written anything? If not, what you'll need to do is I would start with a one to two sentence description of your company. People may not know what is your company and what do you do. So give them help. Be a good brand ambassador. Help them to understand what is your business. And then after that, tell us about the products and services that your company offers. Again, make it easy. You're a brand ambassador. You want them to do business with you. Tell them, here's the types of things that we do. After that, just like I had in my summary at the top, I list specialties in here again. And I do specialties in every one of my experience section. The specialties for each of my experience is related to that specific position. But you're going to see marketing strategy in there for multiple positions. You're going to see LinkedIn there for multiple positions. Okay. And then just like we put in our summary at the top, you can also add media in here. And your media could be projects that you've done. It could be team pictures when you did fundraising campaigns. It could be um, certificates of appreciation. It could be awards that your organization won while you were in that role. So think about telling us your career story by using some of the media elements in there. Does anybody have media in the profile right now? Anybody? One person? Very good. Can you pass the feather ball? You've been wearing it for a while. <laughs> I just realized we got to start moving that around a little bit more. Very it's good. It's one of my brains now, actually. So <laughs> I'm it in <laughs> Very cool. All right, so use media. I mean, all of us have marketing, collateral, and materials. Use your LinkedIn profile and put a couple. You can add PDFs. You can add videos. You can put website links. Let's fill that in a little bit and make that a little bit more interesting. And then before we leave the section, I want you to just look right next to your company name. Is your company logo showing there? If you, you have this gray building avatar, what I like to say is gray is not okay. So if you have that gray building avatar, it either means that, one, you don't have a company page yet on LinkedIn. If that's the case, run out of here and get a company page set up. It's free to do so. It's free advertising and promotion space for your business. And it's pretty simple to set that process up. Okay. The other thing is it may, they may have a company page on LinkedIn and you are not properly linked to that page. If that's the case, then you need to get it linked. Because when I'm visiting your profile, I want to learn more about your company and I can click on your logo to get to your company page. Okay, we're brand ambassadors, we're trying to support our organizations, so certainly do them a favor. And while I'm on the subject of company pages, I want to invite you to follow two pages. If you follow Mellow Marketing on LinkedIn, I will frequently put marketing tips, social media tips, LinkedIn tips. So I kind of put a lot of free samples out there all the time. And then also, I'm just going to give a shout out to the ACC organization. Follow this company page right now. Go onto your LinkedIn, type in the search bar at the top, and type in Automotive Communications Council, and go onto that page and follow. I mean, I was like shocked. I was looking at this page going, 
66 followers when there's probably what 40 or 50 people in here if you, if you all follow it right but if you all follow the page that's going to help Jackie and Georgia and everybody within the organization here and you know you could share those things out of the status updates when we talk about that later but do go in and follow that page okay so moving down your profile, the next section we look at is skills. LinkedIn gives you the opportunity to add up to 50 on your profile. I'm going to see who's paying attention. How many skills do you think I had on my profile out of 50? <coughs> I heard a couple. Raise your hand. I can't hear who you're saying it. Somebody, come on. We're going to get a feather bowl. Come on. 50. 50. Can you pass the feather bowl around? We're going to pass it. <laughs> 50. There we go. We have 50. So LinkedIn gives you spaces for 50. Let's use, I'm gonna, I'll help you out over here. Let's use all 50 in there. Thank you so much. And um, this actually helps you with your SEO, your search engine optimization. It helps you to come up with search results on LinkedIn. If you're struggling with, I can't think of 50, do what I do. I look at my competitors. I look up other people who have my job title on LinkedIn. And I'm gonna get inspired. I'm gonna find 10 to 20 more skills that they have that I also have. Even more important though than using all 50 are what are the top three. So look at your skills right now and look at the three skills that you can see, okay? If those are not the three skills that you want to be known for, you need to reorganize those a little bit. Now I believe you can only do this from desktop. So in the desktop you would click on the pencil icon and you could actually unpin one or more of those and then you could repin things to the top, okay? And I would say most people, and this will help you to remember this expression, I would say most people are lazy. And I don't really think people are lazy, but it's going to help you to remember this. Most people are not going to click on show more. They're going to make a judgment call based on the top three. So if Stacy tells me she's an expert in marketing and marketing strategy and communications, but I look at her profile and it says Excel, financial analysis, and public speaking, I'm like, wait a minute. She's not really a marketing expert, right? But if I look at her profile and it says marketing strategy and marketing communications and um, marketing leadership or something, then I'm like, okay, yep, that confirms what she told me about herself, okay? I don't worry as much about how many times I've been endorsed. When you move things to the top position, you'll get more endorsements. Yes, that does help you with SEO, but I'm more concerned with the human element. What are people seeing on that section, okay? Is this making sense so far? Helpful? You guys are getting some, some homework done as we go. All right, the final section before we move into the next area, I want to just talk about recommendations. And scroll down to that area of your profile underneath skills. You should see some recommendations. If not, this is some homework for you. What I like to look for in your recommendations section is that you have more that you have given than you have received. Okay? Let's say that again. You have, you have more recommendations that you've given other people than people have given you. So if I look at someone's profile and they have received 20 recommendations and they have given zero, what message does that send about that person? They're a, they're a taker, they're not a giver. And I don't know that I want to do business with a, with a taker, right? A little subtle thing. So um, what I would recommend is that you start the process by paying it forward and think about there's probably a couple people right now that you are connected to on LinkedIn that you could give a recommendation to. Now when I give recommendations, I give them strategically. I give them to people that I can speak to firsthand and that have large networks. So Roy is an example of uh, a strategic recommendation. I've seen him speak, he's a phenomenal keynote, and I gave him a recommendation on LinkedIn. The cool thing is this recommendation now appears on Roy's profile with my name linked to it. So I'm gonna get some visibility coming off of, of Roy's profile. Okay, so think about giving those recommendations strategically. The other thing here is that I like to look forward that you have one or two recommendations in the current year. Now it's only April, but you guys can give one or two recommendations and you can um, ask for others to give you recommendations in the current year. What I like to do is if you're working on a great project, right after you come off of that project, your customers are really happy, your teammates are happy, your boss is happy, that's when you ask for the recommendation. That's when you ask them to give you a recommendation. You don't do it, when you're making a job change, because that's a surefire flag. When somebody starts to get 10 recommendations in a row and the profile's updated and they're posting, I'm like, well, they're starting a job search change for sure. So if you want to kind of throw people off the path, get your recommendations and kind of spread those out throughout the year. All right, so that's kind of profile optimization. You'll have some homework there to work on, but continue to work on those techniques and your dashboard numbers are gonna to start to increase. 
The next thing I want to go through are five ways to build and develop your personal brand on LinkedIn. And I want to start with a, an example here. And um, we all have the same 24 hours in the day, right? I don't have 48. I don't have 72. I have 24. I spend some time every single day on LinkedIn. If you want to develop your personal brand, if you want to be a good brand ambassador for your company and figure out how to use LinkedIn more effectively, you've got to commit to 15 minutes every business day on LinkedIn. That's not a whole lot, guys. You can all do 15 minutes, right? We can do that. Um, every business day, and a lot of the things I do, I talk about personalizing and using notes. I use templates. I save everything in my notepad and I just copy and paste, and I might change out a first name. So think about you know, time-saving techniques. And we're going to get into a discussion right now of invitations on LinkedIn. Um, show of hands, how many people is, are in, in personalizing invitations on LinkedIn when they send them out? Every single time? Every single one? Okay, test the color, go up to right behind you there, Tamara. She gets to wear it. Excellent. So Tamara, you can relax, get a cup of coffee as I'm going through this part, but the rest of you, <laughs> I want to explain this technique. And this, um, this meme of Inigo Montoya, it's the Princess Bride. Is that right? I still have to watch this movie. Have you guys seen this floating around? This meme. So he has all the great, the great elements of a LinkedIn invitation. He says, "Hello, my name is Inigo Montoya. You um, killed my father. Prepare to die." Okay. And he has a polite greeting. He gives his name. He is giving a relevant personal link, and he's managing expectations. Now, when you're sending out an invitation on LinkedIn, please don't tell people prepare to die, <laughs> because that's a, that's not what LinkedIn is all about. But you do want to do a personalized message, and you do want to make it all about them. You're not selling in your invitation. Even if you want to sell to them, you don't sell in that initial invitation. So I want you to follow along with me. If you have your desktop or your laptop, I want you to search for me. If you're not yet connected with me on LinkedIn, I want you to personalize and send an invitation to me. Brenda Meller, M-E-L-L-E-R, okay? If you have your phone, same thing. Look up my name on LinkedIn. If you're connected with me, find one of your neighbors because I want you to practice this technique right now. Okay? And those of you who personalize all the time, you might need to help your neighbors as we're going through this. Okay? So what I like to do is when you find them in the search, do not click here on the connect or do not click here. If you do, it sends that invitation off and you can't personalize it. Okay? Instead, what I want you to do is click on their name. Click on their name. Okay? And this is going to take you to their profile. I'm going to show you my, my uh, new connection, Karen, first. She doesn't have the branded header. That's okay. But um, it will remember, you'll, you'll know you're in the right place if you see the header behind them. You know you're in the right place to send that invitation. Now on desktop, if you can see the connect button, you want to click on that. On my profile, I've actually changed it recently to follow. So if you're seeing follow, I want you to instead click on the more drop down. Okay? And then you should see an option for connect coming up in there. Okay? When you do that, LinkedIn's going to give you an option to customize and either add a note or send now. Always, always, always add a note. Always. Even if you know they're going to accept your invitation, always add a note because it forces you to get into the habit of personalizing it every time. Okay? I follow a similar um, formula as Inigo Montoya, but this is more of a professional Ellen version. I will say, hi, first name. Have we met or not? And if we have met, I can remind them where. If not, I'm going to look at their profile and find one or two things that are interesting or one or two things that we have in common. Then I'm going to ask for the connection and send it off. So in this case, I've said, hi, Karen. We haven't met, but we are both in Metro Detroit, and we said have several common connections. Let's connect on LinkedIn. When you use this formula, you make it all about them, I guarantee you're going to get more of your invitations accepted. And now you've got a two-way dialogue that you can start having with this person. Okay. On mobile, some similar steps, but when you're on their profile, do not click on connect here. Instead, you want to click on the more button, or it might be the three dots next to there. Okay? Then you get a menu of options. The one you're looking for is personalized invite, and then same thing. So if you're sending the invitation to me, it might be, hi, Brenda. We uh, met at the ACC 2019 event. You're a phenomenal presenter. Jack is a genius. We're booking you. Let's connect on LinkedIn, you know, or whatever. But you're getting some conversation going back and forth with the person in there. All right, so let's move on now to talk about invitations you receive from people you don't know. What do you do with them? What do you do with them? People are nervous because probably probably going to make its way around. <laughs> okay, yes, can you pass it around here? I ignore them. You ignore them? Okay. I don't know. Okay, 
And then the other one is in the Houston message. We're in similar fields, and I'd like to do business. Right. And I never. It's all. Okay, how about you? What do you do with them? I don't do anything. I just leave them in limbo. I do that too sometimes. You don't do, you don't do anything? You just leave them there? Okay. Anybody else? Anything different than ignoring or just leaving them there? Yeah. Like I, I usually check like their titles. So, like, for example, if I said a rental agent, I okay. would probably do that. Yeah. Like, if it's like something relevant or interesting to me, then I accept. Okay, pretty good. She passed another mm -hmm. problem. Great. And there's no right or wrong answer. There's basically two schools of thought on accepting connections on LinkedIn. There's the, you know, what you guys are doing. There's some type of a screening or criteria that you have in place to decide whether you accept them. And then the other end of the spectrum are the people called lions. Does anyone know what lions means? L-I-O-N? LinkedIn Open Networker. Lance, have you gotten the feather bow yet? No. No, no. Pass it over. Nobody thinks they're going to get a feather row in my presentation. <laughs> but LinkedIn Open Networker, so if you ever see next to a person's name the initials L I O N, that means they will accept any and all invitations that you send out, no questions asked. They think the world's a better place when we can all connect to each other and help do business back and forth. Now, I'm probably someplace in, in the middle, but I consider every invitation as a potential networking opportunity. I never know when that invitation that comes from Jackie could lead to a future speaking engagement or an invitation coming from is it Al, that I might be able to send referrals to Al in the future. I don't know when that will happen. So what I do is I actually screen in every single invitation I receive, and my goal here is to screen them in to create dialogue. I'm not trying to screen them in to create a hurdle. I'm actually trying to connect with these individuals. So if you're in your desktop, you can follow along with me right now. What you want to do is click on your My Network at the top, and then if you do have any pending invitations, you'll see Manage All that's on here. Okay. So under My Network and Manage All, and then I want you to click on, and you're going to actually see when you click on Manage All, underneath each of the profiles, now you have this little uh, message icon here. And you can actually click to message them. And I have a short version and a long version. If you sent me an uh, invitation earlier and you didn't personalize, you'll get my long version. It's basically the same as this, but it's expanded out. But my short version is basically this. Hi, Megan. Thanks for the LinkedIn invitation. Have we met Brenda Muller? Now, I know we haven't met. Megan knows we haven't met. But it's more polite than saying, hey, Megan, who the heck are you and why do you want to connect with me on LinkedIn, right? And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to figure out why does Megan want to connect with me. And what I find is that the intentional invitations, the people who went to my profile and want to connect with me, they will reply back. And they will say, no, we haven't met, but we share common connections, or I saw a post from you, or, or something. I don't care what it is that they respond. The fact is, they're creating some dialogue with me, and then I've got a conversation started to go off on that. OK? So I do this with every single one. If um, a month later, they haven't done anything, responded, then I do what you guys do. I look at their profile, I figure out if they are a good connection, and then I decide whether or not to accept them. OK? So give that technique a try. The next technique here is maximizing your visibility. If you're on your LinkedIn, go into the upper right-hand corner, and you can see this edit public profile and URL. And you're going to see a bunch of options. I just kind of share them here on screen. One of the options is called edit URL. And if you have not yet simplified your LinkedIn web address, please do so now. It's not simplified if it says Brenda Meller, ZX2387, some gobbledygook numeric code. <laughs> if it has that on there, you can actually go in. I don't know that you can do this on the mobile. I think you have to do this on desktop. But you can actually go in there and click on that pencil icon, and it'll allow you to personalize the last section in here. What I like to do is this first name, last name, no dashes, and just make it really simple. Okay? So make sure you personalize. Then you can put that on your business cards, on your sales collateral. You know, um, and that's really easy for people to look you up, and it's not quite as, as cluttered with the nonsense robotics numbers, if you will. Okay? The other thing I want you to look at is your visibility section. And in particular, I want you to look all the way under profile photo, where it says a bunch of different options. And make sure you have it set to public. Remember I said earlier that you'll get 14 to 21 times more profile views if you have a photo on your account? Well, that's only if you have it set to public. If you have a photo on here and the only people who can see it is your connections, you might as well not even have a photo. It's not helping you. Some people won't accept your invitation if they don't see a photo on your account. Okay? And then the other thing, just take a quick scan through the, this list here. Make sure everything is toggled open to blue. Blue shows us you. So if it's gray, 
It means we can't see it. So you spend all this time writing your summary and filling out your experience, and nobody can see it. So you've kind of defeated the whole purpose there. All right, now let's talk about status updates on LinkedIn. How many people are posting status updates on a regular basis on LinkedIn? All right, cool. Okay. Jackie, did you get the feather boy yet? No. no. All right, let's pass around. <laughs> All right, let's keep, keep moving around the room here. So status updates on LinkedIn. Remember I said earlier that the average person only spends about 17 minutes a month, and less than half of people are going onto LinkedIn monthly or more. So if you connect with people, unless you're posting status updates, you're probably blending into the background. They're not remembering who you are. So status updates are a really effective technique at helping to keep our visibility going. And gosh, we're all marketers. I think everybody in this room has a smartphone. And I'm guessing probably most of us have the LinkedIn app on our phone. Guys, get comfortable with your phones. When you are at marketing conferences and events, get comfortable taking pictures of the slides up on the screen. Get comfortable taking pictures of the presenters. Presenters, we have large networks. Jeff and I, we have large networks. So when you tag us on LinkedIn, you can jump on the coattails of all the connections that we have. What happens is when you tag a person on LinkedIn, it shows up in your homepage feed. It also goes in Jeff's homepage feed. So all of Jeff's connections are going to see your post. Same thing with me. I've got, um, I think, around 9,600 connections right now. So when you tag me, it goes into my homepage feed. Tag me, guys. It will give you some additional visibility. Yes, it helps me, but more importantly, if you don't have a large network yet, it's going to help you. So if you took any pictures of Jeff earlier, um, took any pictures of me, and as we go throughout the rest of the conference, we've got two days of presenters, tag and post them on LinkedIn, on other social networks as well. All right, so um, this is kind of the desktop mode. You can see at the top, that's where you would post the status update. For those of you who aren't doing status updates yet, and on mobile, it's right at the top of your phone here. Okay, what I do is I'll actually take five to 10 pictures of every presenter, and then at the end of the day, I'll take one picture of every presenter, and that will be what I post as a status update. And then I share, today I attended hashtag ACC 2019, heard from some amazing speakers, including tag Ed Stockman, and I'll tag all the other speakers. Here are a few of my key takeaways, and I broadcast that out as a status update, okay? So that's a really cool technique to do. If you're struggling, if you're saying, well, Brenda, I don't know what to post as a status update. I run out of ideas all the time. I don't know what to post. Here are some ideas. Every time you go to a conference, an event, anything like that, share that information. You know, share the pictures of the presenters. If your company is posting on LinkedIn, share one of those company um, updates out as a status update. As you're doing research, you know, on our industry articles, share those out. Free samples, I'm going to talk about this a little later, all the time. If I get somebody asking me a question, instead of just responding to that person, I will put it as a status update. And I'll say marketing tip or LinkedIn tip or something like that. Um, inspirational messages, so every Tuesday I do a Take Action Tuesday and I, I try to help people in the job seeker community. Those do really well. People love um, inspirational messages on LinkedIn. And then every Friday I do a, a Follow Friday too. And both of these techniques are um, in this category. And what I will say is that um, this is a technique that I created and I guarantee that if you use this technique, you will never post the same way ever again, okay? <laughs> so NEVA is an acronym. N stands for news. So think about if I dropped a Wall Street Journal in front of you, would you pick it up and read it, okay? The same thing applies with LinkedIn. You're only gonna read it if it's interesting to you. You're not gonna read if I'm selling, selling, selling all the time. You're gonna read it if you see value in that. So think about the newsworthiness, that's the N. The E is engage, and you engage by tagging people and or organizations, okay? The V is a visual element. That visual can be a photo, it could be an infographic, it can be a video, but some type of a visual element with that. And the A stands for a call to action. So what do you want them to do next after reading the post? Do you want to say, what do you think, add your comments below? Or do you want to say, click to visit this website? Or tag somebody? Like, what do you want them to do after they read the post? And I'm going to give you an example, and this was something I put up, gosh, this was at the end of last week, I think I put this post up. And I posted, I said, you know, I'm nerve sighted because I'm going out to this conference and I was talking about, you know, what this conference is all about and I tagged all of the other presenters. So the news was about the ACC 2019 conference. The E was tagging all of these people. The visual was this grid that I created showing all the presenters, right? And then the A, I put in here, there's still time to register link in comments. So I'm telling people, here's what you do next. Here's if you want to learn more about this. 
And this technique is so powerful. Every time I post out, I get easily more than 1,500 views. This one at the time I grabbed the screen capture, it had received already 1,700 views in my homepage and had already started to get a lot of engagement. I got 67 likes, 64 comments. If you guys aren't getting a regular cadence of likes and comments, you're probably not posting things that are engaging with your network. Use the Neva technique and I guarantee you'll start to see the flip in that happening. And a little bit later I'm gonna mention comments too that every time I get a comment, I respond back. If you notice my postings, every time you comment on something, I respond back. Because social media is social, right? And you need to be engaging with your people as they're engaging with your posts. So let's move into this final section now, and this is LinkedIn um, tips for business development. So you're in marketing roles, you're supporting the sales organization, you are brand ambassadors for your organization. And I'm gonna go through, through you some of the obvious and some of the hidden techniques on using LinkedIn for business development here. So the very first thing is, if you follow me on social media, and if you are specifically connected with me on LinkedIn, I guarantee I'm one of those people that is in your homepage feed every single time you come up on LinkedIn. I see some heads nodding, you know what I'm talking about. But why is that? Well, LinkedIn has an algorithm that runs, and it, you kind of train the algorithm based on your activities. If you connect with me but you never engage with any of my posts, I'll start to blend away in the background pretty quickly. But if you start to like things and comment things, LinkedIn is saying, oh, this person is interested in your content, they're gonna show that content to you more often, okay? So keeping that in mind, I am always focusing on paying it forward, showcasing my network, giving the love out to every other person in my network. Very rarely do I ever talk about Meller marketing in my status updates on LinkedIn. More often than not, I talk about other people. I do this with absolutely no expectation that it's ever gonna be repaid, but I know that it will, right? And comments, as I said earlier, are a gift. So anytime someone comments on my company page or my personal posts, I reply back. I give them a, a thank you note, if you will. I say thank you for your comment, having a great, hope you're having a great week. I don't care what the five or more words are, but the LinkedIn algorithm, it detects kind of conversations happening. So if I post and Georgian says, great article, and I reply back and say thanks, LinkedIn says, meh, not that interesting. We're not gonna keep showing that. But if George Ann replies and says, great article, and I say, glad you found it helpful, hope you're having a great week at the conference, LinkedIn says, wow, some conversations are happening. We're gonna show this post up in the homepage feed longer, okay? So when you leave comments on people's posts, don't just say, great article. Say, this was a great article, thanks for sharing. That's eight words. That's really easy, right? You can expand that out pretty quickly. Give skills, um, endorse people for skills, and give them recommendations. That's a su simple thing to do. So when you're looking at profiles from colleagues, coworkers, vendors, customers, give them some skills endorsements. And then think about giving recommendations a couple times a year as well. Search on LinkedIn. How many people have used the search function on LinkedIn? Anybody? Okay. I see the hand so you can find somebody that, hold your hand up again, and then Jackie can pass it around. Somebody who hasn't worn the feather boa just yet. Okay, so search for people on LinkedIn and make sure you're using this search function and adding some filters in. I have a little bonus that I do with my searches. So what I do, and I, I use this example, so a lot of times I'm working with VPs of business development, so I'm searching for VP of business development, and then I click on all filters, and I'm now gonna start to build in the filters that match my target audience criteria. I know that in addition to job title, there's certain geographies, and there's certain industries, so I can start to build those things in. So what I'm gonna do in this case is I'm searching for people that are second or third level, meaning I'm not yet connected to, because I'm looking to build my connections, and then I want to look at it, as I was coming to the conference, I thought, well, let me see who's in San Antonio. So I put San Antonio as a filter, and then I also added in a bonus, something we had in common. So I put where I got my undergrad degree, Central Michigan University. So I put all those filters in, and then I clicked on apply, and what was that? Fire up chips. Fire up chips, there we go. And actually, I said that to this guy. So it showed me two results, VP of Business Development here in San Antonio who went to Central Michigan. And that's actually what I said in my invitation. I said, hi, Dennis. We haven't met, but I see we both attended Central Michigan University Fire Up Chips, and we have several common connections. I'm gonna be in San Antonio for a conference this week, and I thought I might reach out and see who's in the area. Let's connect on LinkedIn, Brenda Muller. Every single one of these that I sent out, and I did this for a couple different job titles, every single one of the people responded back. I had offers from a couple people that said, hey, while you're in town, maybe we can meet up. And I'm like, that wasn't the intent. I'm not looking to do business. I'm just looking to build my connections but using something in common, right away I got that fire up chips, I got that sense of pride, and we, we, we built a little bit of a connection. So think kind of beyond your target audience criteria, use like something that you have in common. 
All right, so my invitation strategy on LinkedIn, if you are looking to do business with people on LinkedIn and you're looking at connecting with people to do business, this is a technique that I follow. First, when you connect, you're making it all about them. You're not selling in that invitation. You are only connecting with them. Then, after they accept, this is the only time I sell. This is the very only time. When they accept, I will say, hi, Jeff, thanks for accepting. I have my one-liner about my business. My business is Meller Marketing, and I help people in businesses with marketing and social media specializing in LinkedIn. Let me know if I can be a resource in those areas. Also, if you get a minute, Jeff, tell me a bit about what you do and how I can leverage my LinkedIn network to help you. Okay? So right away, I'm putting my cards on the table. I'm like, here's what I'm selling. If you're buying, here's what I'm selling. But then also right away, I'm saying, what do you do and how can I help you? So I'm getting reciprocal right away. Now, sometimes the Jeffs of the world will reply back and say, well, I work with a brand marketing company and I'm looking to connect with people in automotive and uh, OEMs and et cetera. And if I know somebody, I'll send Jeff that referral right away. Other times, they may say, well, actually, I need some help with LinkedIn. Can we talk? You know, um, Sometimes it doesn't go in either direction, but the key here is I'm getting dialogue started. And you never know where that dialogue may lead in the future. And then you can continue on with that. Okay? As I said earlier, I save my templates in Notepad. So I don't type these out every single time. I copy and paste, copy and paste, swap out first name. Okay, Make it super easy. If you have a company page on LinkedIn, um, so I want you to think about the technique of a fisherman. And some fishermen, they throw the nets out at the beginning of the day, and at the end of the day, they pull the nets up, and they look to see what fish they've caught, right? A lot of organizations and people are throwing out nets, and they're never checking them. So if you have a company page on LinkedIn, check your nets. The nets essentially are posts that you're putting, putting out on LinkedIn. See who is responding, who is liking them, and who is commenting on them. And this is something that's really cool. On your LinkedIn company page, you can't see who the followers are. Anybody who's a follower of your company page on LinkedIn is basically a lukewarm hand raiser. I'm interested in learning more about your company. I'm not ready to do business with you, but I'm interested in learning more about your company. I can't see those hand raisers until they like or comment. And when you like or comment, now I can actually click on this and I can see a list of all the people who've liked it. Or if you commented, I can see who commented on it. And what I will do is I'll look at these at least once a week, and I'll see anybody who is a second or third level connection, and I will invite them to connect. And I don't say, hi, Irina, I saw that you liked my company page post. No, I follow the same technique. Hi, Irina, we haven't met yet, but we're both marketers and we're both located in Metro Detroit. Let's connect on LinkedIn. Then in my follow-up, I might reference something from the post, or I might just continue on with the dialogue there. Okay. So do that with your likes, with the comments, make sure that you both respond back to those comments and then invite those people to connect if you're not yet connected with them. Okay. Same thing if you have a, a blog on LinkedIn, let's skip one here. If you have a post that you're doing on LinkedIn, check your nets on your post. So every time you post on LinkedIn, you should be looking at who likes and who comments on your post. And if you see anybody who's a second level connection that likes or comments, you should invite them to connect. You never know where those opportunities may lead. Same thing for blogs. You can see likes, you can see comments, and you can also see shares. Okay? And I look at um, the blogs and the, the posts as free samples. I'm going to talk about that in just a minute here. Expand your reach through coopetition. So um, my friend Terry Bean, he's in Metro Detroit also, he used this term with me the other day. And he, he said, Brenda Meller, who's my coopetition. And I really liked it because Terry and I do some similar things. But we're also both of the abundance mentality, which, you know, basically what that means is we both believe that there's more than enough business to go around for all of us in the world, so why not help people that are our competitors? And that's kind of what you guys are doing here with ACC, right? You, you know, some of you are competitors, but you're helping each other out. So what I do is I make a list of my top competitors on LinkedIn, and I will visit their profiles, and if I find people, like in particular, Liz is somebody who's in a similar industry, not exactly what I do, but she does career coaching. Liz has three million followers on LinkedIn. If I go onto one of her posts, and I add in a, a meaty comment, you know, something with more than five words with some substance to it, um, you know, this one in particular, I got eight likes, and I got a couple people that actually reached out to connect with me on LinkedIn, and we're having some conversations going right now. So think about your co-op, Competition or your competition, and especially the people that are at the top of the game in their industry. Um, in the marketing world, I mean, there's like the people like Gary Vee. You know, Gary's got, I don't know, seven bazillion LinkedIn followers. Comment on some of his posts, 
And you're going to get people connecting with you and liking you, and you're going to get some visibility there. Okay? Offer free samples. So oftentimes on LinkedIn, I will post a status update, as I said earlier, and the, the status update is I'm kind of sharing free expert advice and insights. And I think about the analogy of, um, so at home when I go to the fruit market with my daughter on the weekend, we walk into the produce area, and there's a big guacamole bowl, it's like, you know, a huge gallon container, and they're making homemade guacamole, and the guy says, gives us a chip with the guacamole, and we sample that, and we go on the cheese counter, and we get a cheese sample, and olive, and, and by the end of the store, I'm like, God, that guacamole sure did taste good. And I make my way back to the produce section, and I pick up a vat of guacamole for like $10, it's so expensive, but it's so good. Right? Because I've had that taste in my mouth and I love that free sample. So you can use status updates the same way on LinkedIn. So give people like free bits of advice and expertise based on your business, based on the industry, based on the problems that you solve for your customers. And put those out as a status update. And again, check your nets. You know, look at those over time and you'll start to get some, some traction there. Same thing on a LinkedIn blog. You know, blog and articles are kind of interchangeable on LinkedIn and they also refer to them as pulse. So sometimes I'll put it in a status update, it's kind of a short form. Sometimes I want to do it in a longer form, like 300 to 1200 words, and then I put it in a blog. And um, free samples, this is like Q&A for my network, here's my response. The thing I like to do in my blogs is make sure I'm including a call to action at the bottom. The call to action is itself in my business. If I can solve this problem for you, let me know, here's my contact information. Okay, so use those blogs as a tool. Blogs are really great. If you have a blog on your company website, I think that's amazing and wonderful. But how many people are going to click over to your company website and navigate to your blogs and read your blogs, right? LinkedIn, people will stumble upon your blog. And I want you to look at your profile right now. And in your section that's called Articles and Activity, if you've posted anything in the past uh, 30 or so days, you should see Articles and Activity. On the left-hand side is the last time I posted a blog. That blog stays there until I post another blog on top of it. So think about the high amount of visibility you're getting with that one single blog. Okay? On the right hand side is the last three things I did, whether I posted, I liked, I commented, so those are, uh, those kind of move around pretty quickly. But the blog stays here forever, so I can get some really nice visibility with that topic. Okay? So I think we are at the end right now. Um, comments I already mentioned on that one. So I think right now we're going to do the, the drawing. So Jackie, why don't you come up with me here? And did we get the pie tin floating around? Right Where's it at? Is it over here? Okay. So the winner, I'm going to draw one name on here. The winner gets to pick either the chocolate or the fruit tartlet. Okay? I don't like to choose because then they say, well, that's your favorite person or something. There you go. Kathy Jamber. Kathy? Yay! Yay! So Kathy, do you like the chocolate or the fruit? Chocolate. It's a chocolate tart left, so there you go. Enjoy. Thank and then, you. Jackie, this is as a thank you for you for oh, me. So there you go. And it's like this, I usually do like a full size pie, but I knew coming to the conference that um, you probably wouldn't have bought a packet in your carry on by. <laughs> we can stack on this a little bit later on. Later, I shall also have pie. You know, I like this power move here. Um, this is, uh, you probably saw the pie memes that I had in the background. and. Um, I just like to use things like that because it helps to liven up the presentation and keep it fun. This is your homework, so I'm going to finish off and then I'll turn this microphone back over to, um, to Jackie here. So um, you guys are all coming to this conference because you are investing in yourself, your company is investing in you with training and development. I guarantee you will only get something out of this LinkedIn presentation if you actually make effort and do something. So this is my suggested homework checklist. Again, feel free to take pictures of this if you want. Um, take a picture of me with it at, if you want, and you can tag that picture, share that out on your LinkedIn. If you do tag me, I will reply back with five or more words, and I will suggest everyone in my network to look at your profile and to connect with you, and I'll say, tell them Brenda sent you, and I guarantee you'll get a couple new invitations that come through. You'll get a spike in your profile views when you tag me in that post as well. As an incentive, if you do every single homework item on this list, then message me on LinkedIn and say, Brenda, I did my homework. I will look over your profile for you from top to bottom and I'll give you some additional tips. The very first person from this conference who does that is going to get one free hour of LinkedIn consulting. You can use this. You can give it to an employee at your company. You can give it to your favorite salesperson if you want. I don't care. You can give that away. Or if you know somebody who's um, job seeking and needs some help, you can give that free hour to that job seeker too. Okay? So with that, that's it. Connect with me if you'd like a copy of the slides and I'll message you a link and you can download them. Okay? 
All right, any questions or we need to break for lunch? I think we can do, you know, let's just do like six minutes of, of questions if anyone has anything. Was this helpful? Yes. Okay, did anyone not wear the feather boa that wants to wear it? Would you be the first person to ask the feather? Just off. <laughs> it sheds a little bit, but it's kind of fun. Did you guys do some of the work as we were going throughout today? Yeah, sure. Get some of those things going in there? Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Well, again, as you're connecting with people throughout the conference here, make sure that you are connecting with them on LinkedIn. Um, use the hashtag if you're posting about the event as well. And uh, message me anytime if you have any LinkedIn questions. Okay? Well, thank, thank you, you so thank much. You.